All right, so in the last module, we got started with Azure Databricks workspace. We understood what a workspace is all about and we uh, also created a bunch of pools and cluster and uh, kind of got a knack of how the clusters and pools kind of interrelated with each other. Uh, we created majority of them, uh, in fact, all of them using the uh, GUI, uh, Microsoft Azure portal. However, for the infrastructure automation purpose or folks who are coming from DevOps or SRE background, uh, one who needs to manage their infrastructure using some sort of uh, infrastructure as a code, this session is for those folks so that we can manage our infrastructure, uh, Databricks infrastructure using Terraform. Whatever we created using Microsoft Azure portal manually clicking around, you don't want to click around the GUI if you're coming from an automation uh, background uh, and if you want to manage your infrastructure for multiple environments you would uh, need to have some sort of uh, infrastructure as a code uh, so this session is going to be about Terraform how you could manage your Databricks infrastructure using Terraform and uh, at the end we would also see how you could use Databricks CLI to manage any object underneath your workspaces be it the cluster secrets uh, file system uh, or the tokens or the cluster configuration everything could be managing manage using the CLI as well so without further uh, ado let's get started so I've got my uh, terminal um, ID opened I'm using IntelliJ um, for the purpose and I've also got my documentation um, that's my documentation uh, which uh, we are going to refer to and fro uh, this is not specific to Azure. The, these APIs are uh, generic Databricks API, Terraform API, which can be used for any provider, be it uh, GCP, Azure, or AWS. We're going to use it for Azure. And then we have got one specific uh, Terraform module for uh, Azure. So um, let's get started. Let's get, uh, let's uh, write some Terraform code. So I'm going to create my first file, going to be main.tf. And then I'm going to use... Uh, var or rather provider dot tf so once that is created i am good to write my terraform code the first thing is you want to create a resource group um so the api is going to be azure rm resource group and that's going to be resource group um, location we are going to use north europe North Europe um, could be any of the region and then name um, data breaks RG and now we're gonna create the workspace um, so it's gonna start with the key name as resource and then the API which is going to be Azure RM data breaks data breaks workspace and we're gonna give it an give it a reference workspace and uh, for the location, you could use the same location as a, a resource group. So we're going to call the resource group with the reference name and then the location a name. We're going to use, give it a name as Azure Code Red DB. And then the resource group name, we're going to call the resource group as, uh, call the reference the resource group name mm, using the name attribute and the SQ which is going to be premium uh, or standard whatever you want to use remember we you we chose a premium when we were created manually and this is going to create your uh, workspaces however it doesn't hold any of the um, clusters or pools or node type at the moment so to view that let's go back to our documentation um, that's our documentation cluster and let's probably try to um, copy the Databricks cluster resource. All right, so that's the cluster. We're gonna uh, make sure that we wanna pick the smallest of the uh, node type. And obviously, those who are cre creating this for the first time using Terraform, uh, there's a gotcha. You need to make sure that your workspace is created first. Otherwise, you're going to get into an error that's mentioned in the documentation of Azure Databricks as well. So you could just use the depends on attribute and give it a name uh, and uh, that would be depend on the workspace. So you want to make sure that the first workspace is created, then it's going to select this, uh, the node type and we're going to do the same for um, the Spark version also, we're going to use the latest LTS and then 
we are going to create the cluster but before the cluster creation remember we created the instance pool as well so we're going to create the instance pool as your um, that's going to be databricks api so that's going to be databricks and then instance pool and then give it a name as probably nodes or rather pool and you define the pool structure right over here you start with the instance instance pool name which is going to be code red pool and then we remember we chose the minimal idle instances so we're going to give the mid minimal idle instances uh, which is going to be an integer so I can select 0 or whatever numeric and then the max capacity uh, that's going to be the maximum capacity of the clusters can inflate up to that's going to be again an integer and then it's going to be node type so node type underscore id is going to be data because we're importing the node type right over here so that's going to be node type dot smallest and dot obviously the id uh, so once we have done that we could just give the idle instance type also remember we chose the idle instance parameter when we were creating manually and then auto termination underscore minutes and then that's going to be 10 minutes and then we could just uh, refer the cluster with uh, the uh, instance so we're going to use it depends on again because we want to make sure the first the pool is created then only the cluster could be created so we're going to give it as uh, uh, azure rm workspace obviously we want the workspace we created first and then um, the auto scaling and we don't want to don't want this huge size of uh, max worker node and what we could do is we could just the, use the instance map the instance pool id as well that's going to be instance pool id and then we're going to refer to this one which is going to be databricks instance pool dot the reference name which is going to be pool and dot id that's about it so now you have uh, allocated the shared cluster name you've given the spark version which we have defined right over here uh, we've given the node type as well we've given the auto termination as 20 minutes um, interesting thing you could just give the spark conf as well so remember we use the spark conf and you could just give the configuration right over here uh, the conf could go like inside the string uh, could be as uh, simple as what we used in our uh, cluster in the previous video dot io probably enable the cache so this is going to be cache dot enabled and the value is going to be true and yeah you could use multiple spark config uh, depends upon your um, requirement and then you we could just use the custom tags as well custom tags and we're going to give the tags as uh, probably created by infra team and you could just have multiple tags also all right that's uh, uh, about it you could just go back to your uh, documentation and you could just verify that whatever we have uh, written we use the instance pool uh, and that's the documentation for instance pool uh, so we're going to come back and then we're going to use the provider section um, in the provider section um, there's a bunch of information we're going to feed in the first thing is going to be uh, Terraform and the required providers Required providers would be data breaks and we want to make sure that um, The source gonna be pulling out from the data breaks Labs and underneath it we have the data breaks all of these information are available on the Terraform documentation so don't worry about the syntax and the latest version once we've done that uh, we're going to pull in the azure rm provider and for the authentication we are going to um, pull in our mandatory details um, which is going to be the features 
which is mandatory for Azure RM and then we're going to use the client ID we're going to use the client secret and then we're going to use the tenant ID and the subscription ID as well we're going to go back to our Azure documentation right over here um, we first gonna go to the Azure app registration rather go to Active Directory if this is all new for you I would recommend you to understand the authentication there are multiple ways of uh, doing the authentication and one of them is using the um, the secret and the client ID so we are using that uh, I've already got one created I'm gonna use the client ID that's going to be my IntelliJ and I'm gonna paste it right over here I'm gonna come back here use the tenant ID paste it right over here um, then I am going to go to the certificate and secret and generate a new secret um, for code red add and that's gonna generate a super secret I highly recommend you do not to put it in a plain text rather pull it from some sort of uh, key vault and then we're gonna go to the Azure subscription copy the subscription ID where we wanna create the resources and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a provider for data breaks as well data breaks and then we are gonna we're gonna use the depends on over here also so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Azure underscore workspace underscore resource underscore ID and that's going to be Azure RM Databricks workspace dot workspace reference and then uh, the ID and then we would need to have Azure RM client um, ID secret and tenant so we're gonna copy it right from here put it right over here and then just edit the parameter as per the Databricks documentation so it's going to be Azure Client ID, Azure Secret and Azure Tenant ID. So if you go to our code again, we could just verify we created a resource group, we created a workspace, we created a node type and then we define a Spark version, instance pool and then the cluster which was binded with the instance pool. And then we define the uh, configuration of our spark there could be multiple configuration which you could put right over here we've got the custom tags uh, you could have as many tags as you want I'm gonna launch my terminal now um, mm -hmm. and run terraform init and let's check if we have any typos or any of the errors uh, so it's gonna initialize and install all the plugins so if you could just elaborate our um, databricks folder you could just see that dot terraform is folder is there and now you have all the modules uh, underneath the providers so with the new version uh, 0 0.15 of terraform you could just have everything underneath the need the providers rather than the plugin I'm just gonna do a validate as well so that we have uh, identified any uh, plugin or some sort of uh, name so on the line 25 if you go to the line 25 we've got the instance pool name which is is not expected here um, all right so just a small little typo instance um, so I'm gonna remove the a and that should be all instance pool name let's do a validate again and see if there are more errors the validation is successful let's just do a terraform format and use the terraform fmt it's formatized everything it looks good you could see that it has aligned everything and our code kind of looks cleaner now now try to run plan and see what all it's going to create So there should be around six, seven resources. Um, so I, there are four resources: the instance pool um, with certain information, the shared uh, auto cluster, uh, the cluster which is going to be attached with 
um, the pool and then we've got the workspace and a bunch of other information what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run Terraform apply and then auto approve and that's going to start applying resources onto our Azure so if we haven't got any of the resource group uh, we've got a bunch of resource group but nothing underneath the Azure Databricks um, whatever we created in the last video we deleted just to save uh, some burn rates so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, wait for a couple of minutes and that's going to create workspace cluster uh, and the instance pool as well so it has started to create the workspace already all right so the cluster is now created nearly a, about just ab uh, above uh, five minutes if you go to our azure portal and hit hit refresh we should have uh, the databricks workspace now which is azure code red db um, if you go to our workspace and launch our workspace newly created workspace with the azure authentication which kind of comes uh, natively we would see a cluster uh, which is attached uh, to a brand new pool if you go to the cluster uh, this cluster is this one which is um, attached to our code red pool if you go to the code red pool uh, the pool is now running which has got two idle instances with a maximum capacity of 10 all right this is uh, how it is to create uh, automate the infrastructure using um, Terraform we're gonna come back again uh, on this um, in upcoming modules wherein we would uh, try to mount a storage using Terraform as well uh, that's it for now I hope this was informative thank you